crazy rhythm game, Street Fighter V. Slam in. Title released the Egret 2 in 1996. It was their answer to Sega's Astro City with a few improvements. With easy access to the inside of the cabinet and rotating monitor mount, it would take only a couple of minutes to change monitor orientation. Fast forward to 2022, history seems to have repeated itself. Following the release of Sega's mini arcade cabinet, Taito once again are playing catch up. Is it any good? Let's find out today with this package from Amazon's. This box is very pink. It's got six sides. Been waiting for this for a while. The extras you could have bought are on this side. You cheapskate. On the back, we have the instruction manual. And then we have the games list. The bottom of the box is bright pink. When opening, the first thing we're greeted with is thank you, followed by two pink flaps. This flaps. There's a bag with both instructions and stickers, a USB to USB-C cable for power, HDMI cable, standard size. Mine is way above average size. And the last thing in this hole is the plastic holder for the marquee. The box itself is very well packaged. And first impressions, this looks awesome. The speaker grills at the top, the 4-3 display, area for the marquee, pretty nice indeed. I know cheaper girls that can do way more with their set of flaps. With some more money, you can unlock more games by using an SD card with this slot. Around the back, we have the power switch, two USB ports for controllers, HDMI, audio, and USB-C for power. Ah, this doesn't open, it's not for battery. We need five volts, two amps to power this unit. And underneath, there's a button we can push. The fully micro switch joystick really does feel the part, much like an LS32 Famitsu. The buttons in the center feel like clicky crap. Yeah, these main buttons feel pretty good. We could have gone elsewhere to feel pretty good. So this thing on the bottom, we can change the gate by just turning it like so. Now it's physically impossible to hit the diagonals on this joystick. Honestly, this just feels weird. Here it goes. Okay, now back again. Okie dokie. The manual is all in Japanese. Not useful in the slightest. And here are the stickers. The marquee holder on top, it looks good, but it's not a very tight fit. For the size comparison today, we're gonna use one Roybosch tea bag. Actually, let's compare it to the other mini arcades. It's a head higher, and so is the price. As this can run on 5V 2 amp, we're going to use this portable battery to power the device. But first... Oh yeah! Boot time! Time indeed! We can now select a language from Japanese, English, Chinese and uh, Simplified Chinese? The game's menu itself is not visually appealing. There is a lot of unused space. There is a picture of the cabinet that you're using. And to top it off, the video thumbnail is tiny. The games are originally sorted by release date. We can change it to sort by alphabetical order. If we go to the console settings, we can change the volume. Brightness. Filter, which I assume means the violin filter. We can change the background music with no option to turn it off.
demo settings, which is like a screensaver option, and a few more options that we won't use. So the picture on the left shows us that Space Invaders is originally a vertical game. So we're just going to flip this around. All right, let's just see if we can start this. In the settings screen, we can save or load state. And then relive the best day of our life over and over. Rotating the screen mid-game also works without a hitch. And then we can rotate back if you want. This game here is Tazajin. If you look closely, it looks like there's some kind of graphical filter on. If we go to the game menu and turn the filter to on, it takes the filter off. That's weird. Saving a few pennies means I need to make my own marquees. Just gonna use the L-sized photo paper. Then cut it in half. Bish bosh boom, we are good. Street Fighter Zero Two. Head joking. Chun Li has nice legs, but Mike has my heart. Nice melons. Time for some gameplay. Rainbow Islands Extra just feels like a hack. This machine badly needs the original. A total classic. The screen feels slightly squished here. If it was stretched to the full screen, this would be perfect. Same goes for New Zealand Story. Kanash, while being an amazing game, it lacks the English language. You can only have Japanese. Bit of a wasted opportunity here. Rastan Saga. I swear this game is Pocky and Rocky, but it's called Kiki Kai Kai. Decent game, but if you look at the top and bottom, it doesn't use the whole screen. And this side shooter, Metal Black, is pretty nice. It's good. Ray Force is excellent. There are a few fighting games on here, but there's nothing that really rivals anything from Capcom or SNK. Saying that, the collection of shooters on here is pretty decent. When we use an external monitor with HDMI, we get some additional options. Again, we need to turn the filter on if we would like the image to be nice and sharp. And HDMI turn rotates the screen either left or right. Let's check out a few more wallpapers. New Zealand Story. Patrick Hero. Space Invaders. But if we look closer, the size of the pixels is not consistent. It is not pixel perfect and is a big disappointment. Having played all of the 40 games on the system, we found that the list was pretty hit and miss. Where is the original Rainbow Islands? Where are the other Space Invader games? It had some great sequels. The Egret Cabs in the arcade included non Taito games. So maybe in the future they plan for expansion packs to get around paying for extra controllers, 
we found that the 8-bit DOM30 with a black dongle works perfectly. If you wanted to use some other controllers, you could use this Mayflash Magic NS. If you can connect your controller to this, it'll work in the egg grip. This is on direct input, so analog is not supported here. This is the Hori Xbox 360 arcade stick. Or if you have an arcade cabinet, you could use HDMI out and the Pico fighting board, which are both running through the Mayflash. Let's take her apart. This has six screws holding it together. And unlike the Astro City Mini, it's actually very easy to open. The stick uses very small micro switches. And this is the piece here, which rotates to change from four way to eight way. Both the stick and buttons are non-standard. You won't be able to switch these for authentic arcade parts but the cables that run from them will be able to be used in a hardware mod if you wish to do so. If you have a solution for the monitor, you may be able to fit a Pi or a MUB in here. There's enough space for that. And here's the main circuit board. Let's get to the pros and cons. The build itself is pretty good. You've got a decent stick and buttons, and you can rotate the display. There are a few great games on it, but unfortunately, the software itself doesn't back up the hardware. Uneven pixels, Squish characters and the display not filling the screen are amplified by the awkward games list and the premium price. We can only recommend this if you want something nice to display on your shelf. The software for it is a disappointment and we feel that Taito need to work on their quality control to up their game in order to become competitive against the other options. Before we leave, we'd like to say a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. You guys are amazing. You give us well-needed support and motivation to push out these videos and to continue working on our Pandora software. If you'd like to support our work, please be kind by giving us a like and a subscribe. Yes, do it now, do it already. It's depressing when Baby Shark can do so well. I know, I'll give it a try. Baby Shark, do, 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 Baby Shark. Do bopper do, do.